Shalom, Mishpachim. Eric here, reminding you that I know nothing. And that's why I got a B plus. That really means B positive. So we're about to prepare for the holiday of Passover. And it has a lot of symbolism and is very relevant to our times today. It is uh, the remembrance of the exodus in Egypt, the 400 years of slavery, and how we got out of it. And uh, it's very relevant to modern politics and times today. I won't get into that here, but um, I want to talk about some of the themes of it. Um, one of the main symbols of Passover is matzah, and it's all about deflating our ego and anything else that is pumped up. So if you take a look at it, it is unleavened bread. It's got little cracks in it, and uh, there's, the dough did not have time to rise, so it's uh, only 18 minutes are allowed for it to cook. So where in our lives are our egos inflated? Hmm, I could find many ways. Let's just look at your Facebook stats, your likes, your YouTube video hits. Are you living your life? where your self-esteem is determined by external factors. So it's also about freedom from slavery. So where are we slaves in our lives? Hmm, computers, social media, are we slaves to them? Our phones? It's very modern. <laughs> Yahweh had a plan to remind us of this when we need it. Okay, so um, it is a time of preparation of cleaning your house and getting rid of any chametz, any leaven. So it's a spiritual as well as a physical cleaning and the objective is purification. Yahweh wants his children to purify themselves to prepare to receive the Torah. That's the ultimate objective of wandering in the desert, to receive Yahweh's law and to prepare his people to receive it. So they had to go through a lot of struggles and hardship, and even when they received it, they weren't ready. They went back to idolatry. So it is a critical holiday. It is um, a marker for the whole year cycle, and it is essentially a new year. So how is Passover observed? Well, the Seder is the um, meal. There are two Seders where um, the family gets together and fulfills the commandments of um, eating bitter herbs, of remembering the sacrifice. So it's a lot of symbols. This is a Seder plate, and the Zoroa is the Passover sacrifice where the um, Israelites had to in very quickly sacrifice a lamb and put it on their doorposts, the blood, and um, so that the angel of death would pass over them. So it's very symbolic and relates to Mashiach. Um, the uh, moror is bitter herbs. So we use horseradish or uh, some other bitter item to remind us of the bitterness of slavery. And um, related to that is what's called chazret, which is a romaine lettuce or a um, similar bitter herb that is used in a sandwich with haroset and moror. So these two are used at one point in the service between matzah to um, perform a custom to make a sandwich to indicate that our bitter times have been sweetened. And karpas is um, a green vegetable, usually like a celery or parsley, 
that is dipped in salt water to remind us of the tears that were shed by the people of Israel. And I say also the tears that Yahweh shed because the Egyptians could not be redeemed. And there's also an egg. And uh, if you don't eat eggs, I suggest using an orange or a clementine. Um, it's uh, a symbol of purity, the, full, the wholeness, the roundness. And um, the orange, it actually dates to some controversy where um, a rabbi said, oh, the day that women do something would be the day that there's an orange on the Seder plate. So since that day, people have put oranges on their Seder plate. Okay, uh, some alternatives for some of the items on the Seder plate are um, beets instead of a roasted shank bone for people who do not eat meat. Um, and um, the charoset is made with apples, walnuts, cinnamon, and wine or grape juice. So you chop those items up and blend them together and it'll taste delicious. Okay, romaine lettuce for the chazret, parsley for the karpas, and instead of the egg, you could use an orange or a clementine if you don't eat eggs. Okay, I'm going to read this list of other items on, on your Seder plate, well, on the Seder table. Three matzah. Place them in a matzah cover or a large napkin. Wine or grape juice. Place a wine goblet or glass in front of each setting and fill a decanter near the center of the table. You were supposed to drink four cups of wine. Salt water. All celebrants will use salt water and a dish of it should be easily accessible to all at the table. Use more than one dish if desired. The cup of Elijah. Use a large goblet to be filled with wine and placed near the center of the table. So we invite Elijah in and watch for that wine. See if it goes down. And a pillow. Use a pillow or a cushion on the left arm of the leader's chair or another chair close to it. Because we're meant to be eating when by reclining like free people, not like slaves. It is a privilege that Yahweh is giving to us. And there are spiritual things happening on that night. If you could find one in a grocery store, you could get a free Haggadah, which tells the story of Passover. Maxwell House was one of the first to do that because they made the first kosher for Passover coffee. Um, and then you'll find some coupons in there too. So uh, it'll help you get what the media thinks you should have. Um, People usually get like gefilte fish for their horseradish. Um, that's just traditional. There's nothing mandatory about that. Um, it's a time of new foods. And then Passover is followed by the holiday of first fruits, where we recognize that we are to give the first fruits of our labor to Yahweh, unlike Cain, who gave his second or third fruits. Abel gave his first fruits of his calves. So, um, let this holiday sink in. It is very serious, but also it's um, going through the process can be very freeing. You're getting rid of anything that's blocking you. And by the end of observing the holiday, you feel a wonderful sense of freedom and release that Yahweh has delivered you.